Welcome to my coverage of the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2023. Join me, Bastish B, and my friend Audie from Limited Run Games as we go and hunt for the games that nobody wants. And I'll be showing you around the event. So let's get this video started. And I just picked up my badge for the weekend. And this place has three main sections, the arcade, and then obviously the massive vendor hall where you can buy all the games you want and go broke in the process. And also there's plenty of like mini events going on here as well that all have their own dedicated spaces. And obviously lots of halls to check out your favorite panels. And already picked up the Robocop movie on CDR. This is the face of a happy man. And this space taxi conversion of the Commodore 64 game to the 2600. And big box PC games were represented plenty here this year. I'm very happy about that. Hardly saw any last year. There's even some C64 gold box Dungeons and Dragons games. And we found the same C64 box we dug through last year. I managed to pick up Savage, the side-scrolling action game for the C64, and World Games, which I can't believe I don't have a physical copy of. And those controls aren't complicated at all, but you gotta love those classic Atari vector graphics. And I had no idea Troma Pictures was going to be here. There was a demo of the new Toxic Crusader game. Cool looking side scrolling beat em up. And I even got to meet the King of Cheese himself, Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma. And of course, Toxie and Claire. And I was getting hungry. I took a quick snack break before getting back to the madness. And I swung by the Sega Saturn Shiro table to check out what they had. They had this insane karaoke Saturn Tower of Power monstrosity and of course the Sega Saturn Pluto was also on display here to check out and then I checked out their panel where they were talking about all the English fan translations that have been done for Saturn games over the last couple decades it was really excellent and I met up with good old Saturn Dave himself he'll be featured in an upcoming documentary of mine so look out for that and don't forget to check out the Sega Saturn Shiro crew as well they got a podcast and also video versions are on YouTube And I had no idea Richard Garriott's Calibus was getting a conversion to the Intellivision. And I swung by the limited run booth. And I checked out Valis. I seriously want to get these collections. And I found Audi again, under tables as usual, scrounging for C64 stuff. Nice haul by the way. He found some good stuff for us. And we also found this other little box around the corner. It was just loaded with US album cover versions of C64 stuff. Unfortunately, I had all of these. And I went to check out the art of Nintendo Power. This is like a curated look at a whole bunch of artwork that was actually used in real Nintendo Power magazine. You can see the original artwork that was made and you get to see the uh, final product. This is a pretty cool display. There was also a pretty big Jaguar display over here, showing a full set of the games. They also had the uh, doctor's equipment, the dental camera program that was used. They used the Atari Jaguar shell to make this instrument, which is hilarious. Got 
good old Atari Lynx. Got to get one of those again. And they also had a full set of games here on display. And they had a nice, really clean copy of Pitfall 2 there. And I found a whole bunch of Neo Geo AES games. It's always nice to see these in the wild. And the world's largest NES controller. These people were struggling. Lots of good PSX games there, but I got most of the ones I wanted there. And I found a box of Vic 20 games some Congo Bongo, some pretty good titles in here, Sky is Falling. And I met Sean from Blaze Entertainment, they're the guys that make the Evercade. And I got the opportunity to play the Duke Nukem 1 and 2 pack, the upcoming one, based on the good old DOS games from the early 90s. I played these, I believe it was the shareware version of these on my computer when I first got it. Pretty cool, thanks a lot Sean. Damn, I'm good. And since when did Psychic Detective become $7,500? Anyway, found this awesome Pac-Man Neo Geo Pocket. Boxed, I wish I bought that, I don't know why I didn't. And I found a whole pile of Sega Saturn import games. Unfortunately, I have all of these, but really cool selection anyway. And I went to this VHS swap meet. This room was way bigger than I thought it was. It had at least eight tables full of VHS you could buy. Some creepy full moon entertainment movies. <laughs> And some star logs, I used to love reading those. Tons of obscure movies here. Gunsmith Cats on VHS, Gava Dark Hero 2, I don't know why I didn't buy that. And I found Ultima Pagan here. Yeah, still gotta get a physical of this one. I love seeing these new Atari box games. And apparently Rocket Rangers coming to the Jaguar. Also found a classic Sega Arcade hidden out in the corner. And we found some more C64 stuff. Jumpman Jr. I picked up Deadline. Audi was buying 3DO stuff. I approve. And I found Castlevania Bloodlines, been wanting to get this for ages. Whoa, no, maybe not. <laughs> and I found a Disk Drive here, a 1571 C64 one. I would have picked that up if I wasn't jumping on a plane. <laughs> These cartridges are way bigger than you think. They're actually wall displays, pretty cool. The X-Men double screen arcade. This woman's control technique leaves much to be desired. And Blockbuster had a setup here. You could buy any movie on their shelf. They had DVDs and VHSs, which was pretty cool. And an original Pong arcade kit. And I found Sword of a Million for 20 bucks, import version. I already got it, but pretty cheap. Whole Tetris tournament going on there. I just love seeing old computers out on display. And that pretty much brings my time here to an end. Just want to thank Audi for some great game hunting. It was so much fun. And I had to catch a train to the airport and stick around because I'll be showing all the pickups I found at the convention.
interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I'm just back from the convention. It was super cool. I was super tired yesterday. I couldn't even shoot the pickups. It's now Monday. I'm busy shooting these. And let me show you all the cool games I managed to get. First up is the Commodore 64 version of Marble Madness. This is the American kind of album cover version. This conversion was done by Electronic Arts. It's really, really good. Really good conversion. Next up, I picked up Out of This World. The Genesis version. I don't actually have this. I got flashback on the Genesis. I don't actually have uh, this world. So this was a really good pickup. It was pretty cheap too. Really happy to have this. I even like this kind of box art. I know it's not the traditional one, but uh, I don't know. It's still kind of cool. Yeah, this is the classic computer game by Delphi. And this version is quite good. I really like it. And uh, yeah, another one to the Genesis collection. Next is another Commodore 64 game. This is called Dragon World. It's done by a company called Telerium. I never played a lot of their games back in the day. I just never had access to them. Besides the Perry Mason game, I never played really any. I messed around with another one. I don't remember what it was called offhand. But they made really good graphic text adventure games. This one is also complete. It's got the whole gateway folder kind of deal. As you can see, it's massive. <laughs> Comes on in two, two discs, which is kind of rare. Two double-sided discs, which is, you know, not very common on the C64. That means it's, there's a lot of game in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, super happy to have this. This was very, very cheap as well. And we'll keep the C64 train going. I got Jumpman and Jumpman Junior, two games by Epix. Very cool to get these. Jumpman, the box is a little bit squished. Uh, can probably iron that out and get it to back to normal for the most part. Jumpman Jr. is in very good condition. I actually prefer this as a game anyway. Jumpman Jr. is just cooler. Jumpman is a classic as well. These are kind of like single screen, kind of collect a whole lot of things and exit level kind of deals. I've heard this is not a very good game. I've actually never played the third James Pond game. I've only played the first two. So forgive me, but I'm trying to collect all the EA Big Box games anyway. This is part of my list that I want to get. So I haven't personally played this, even though I know a lot of people don't like it. But I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, whether it's better than the original versions or not, who knows. But anyway, I got James Pond 3, another game that was dirt cheap. And next is a big box PC game. This is called Silverload. This was also came out on the PlayStation 1 way back right at the beginning. This game was made by Vic Tokai. It's like a point and click almost adventure game. Uh, this one is, it's kind of vampires and cowboys. It's very cool. This is a pretty forgotten game. I'm really glad I got this. Uh, getting big box PC games are very satisfying. And back to some more C64 games. I got another Epix game. This is World Games. This was in the same box that me and Audi dug through last year. We found the exact same box. It had the exact same games that we left off at. Um, I didn't personally have any more money at that point. Otherwise, I would have bought more. <laughs> so we pretty much just carried on exactly where we left off. This is hilarious. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we buy games that nobody else wants. Anyway, uh, this is an excellent uh, multi-event sports game. I love it. Uh, it's a favorite. The Commodore 64 version is by far the best one, in, in my opinion. At least on the 8-bits anyway. Uh, yeah, got that. And I also got this game. It's called Stunflyer by Sierra. So I'd never ever heard of this game before. That's what I love about the Commodore 64. Still to this day, I'm finding games I've never 
heard about or even seen before. Audi said he's played this before and uh, said it's pretty good. I've never played this before, so I'm really looking forward to this. I love flight simulators. And back to the Genesis for another pickup. This is Toja Manuel Panic and Funkatron. This is the second Toja Manuel game. This one, they switched up the formula. It's just like a side-scrolling platformer in traditional Genesis style. This game is in fantastic condition. As you can see, it looks basically brand new. I'm really impressed. This was 25 bucks. Um, it's a pretty good deal as far as I'm concerned. I'm collecting a lot of Genesis games right now because I'm adding them to my documentary. That'll be out hopefully in the next couple months. And uh, full history on the Genesis and all the games. It's going to be pretty cool. Hope you'll check it out. Anyway, I'm really glad to have this one. And the last bit of Commodore 64 stuff. You saw this earlier. I picked up Savage. This is a European game. Very cool. It's got awesome music. The 16-bit versions, like the Amiga and that ones, are actually better than the C64 one. But this is still an awesome game. I really like it. I haven't played this game in decades. But uh, it's very good condition. This is the US version. The other one I got here is Buck Rogers. This is Planet of Zoom. This is the uh, based on the Sega arcade game. This is in Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday, the RPG. This is a different game. Uh, this game is not all that great. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This was a very early C64 release, that's why. This game is also the cartridge version. I've actually got a loose version of this, but having this fully complete box, and this was only 10 bucks, I couldn't pass that up. It's a great deal. And the last C64 game here is Deadline. This is by Infocom. This, I believe, is the first Commodore 64 Infocom game that was released. You can even tell it was published by Commodore. They did, they kept all their covers exactly the same with this like blue kind of stripey thing and the Commodore logo at the bottom. So this is like launch kind of time, 82-ish, late 82, 83. This is a text adventure game. This one doesn't have graphics. It's in typical um, Infocom style and it's like a de film noir detective kind of thing. So yeah, this was super dirt cheap as well. This usually goes for a lot more I've seen online. I got lucky, so I got Deadline, which is awesome. And this last bunch of stuff I was gifted by Audi at Limited Run. This is super cool. I was, I was totally not expecting this, but uh, he gave me um, Valis, the Valis collection, one and two. I've been wanting to get these forever. Uh, ever since I heard about them, I've been getting into the Ballast games. I just find them fascinating for some reason. They're not the greatest side-scrolling action games ever made, but there's something uniquely, weirdly Japanese about them, which I really, really enjoy. I've got the entire collection here. This is amazing. What an amazing gift. And on top of that, I was, he also gave me this Shredder's Revenge. This is the, the VHS edition. This game is obviously, this is on Switch. It's on all modern uh, platforms. Uh, we've actually played this, uh, my wife and my daughter, we've all played this together, like three player, and we, just, we had an absolute great time to have a physical copy, especially this VHS edition, which is just crazy cool. Um, uh, thank you, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Just such such great gifts. And the last two things aren't games, but they're gaming related. I don't know if it's gonna, be able to show this properly but they've got this shirt here this is a karateka shirt it's got like the apple II kind of a still frame of the game very cool i bought a couple of these shirts last year i got an ultima one and rise of the dragon and i bought another ultima one here as well this is as you can see this is ultima quest of the avatar hope you can see that it's got kind of a popped out and embossed kind of deal. I don't know what you would call that in shirts, but those shirts are awesome. Audi also got a Karateka one as well. Couldn't resist. Such great stuff. And that's it. That's a wrap. I really enjoyed myself at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. If you've never been, I'd highly recommend it. It's by far my favorite video game convention I've ever been to anyway. Quick shout out to the Sega Saturn Shiro group. I really enjoyed meeting you guys. Sean from Blaze Entertainment, thank you for letting me play the Duke Nukem games, that was awesome. 
Audi and the whole limited run crew, thank you very much. It was really fun going game hunting with you again. Ghetto Blaster, for the person that knows what I'm talking about, inside joke. Cheers. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can please like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.